Hello, my fellow humans. Today, we are going to talk about the scale and why I think most people should just stay away from it. I think the scale causes more problems than anything else. Um, Dr. Barry has a video on what causes weight stalls. I'll link it in the description, but I want to talk about something else. I see a lot of people frustrated that this number on the scale is not moving. And there's a lot of things going on that are really important. One being that you might actually be losing fat and at the same time gaining muscle. Just eating protein and keeping your carbs down and going through your daily activities is going to build muscle. It's not gonna be, like you're not gonna blow up like a bodybuilder, but you, you are gaining muscle. Especially if you're coming from a plant diet, then yeah, you lost a lot on that plant diet and you're, you're gonna be gaining some more just from lifting a bag of dog food, carrying groceries, stuff like that, and it adds up. So it might not look like it's a lot of muscle, but it weighs more than fat, but there's smaller amounts of it. Get a tape measure. These are like really cheap. You can pick them up at Walmart, Hobby, a craft store, and go buy this because even if the number on the scale isn't moving, I bet you're most likely losing inches. And another thing to consider is you could just, you don't even have to buy one of these. You could just have no issues getting on a scale. I can get on a scale and if the number isn't getting lower or even if it goes up for a few pounds, I'm not gonna freak out. I'm, I'm okay because, well one, the whole reason for even doing this was to just get rid of the pain and to feel better. Um, so yeah, while it would have been really nice to lose all of that fat, I wasn't going to be discouraged as long as I was feeling better. And I was feeling better, so I had no problems being on the scale. But some people will... And I'm not kidding you, there was a member in Dr. Berry's group who posted that she was frustrated and ready to give up because she had been eating the carnivore diet for two weeks and the scale did not move. I understand, but it's only been two weeks. Uh, I think Dr. Barry once said it takes like three months or 90 days, three months, for um, the fat around your liver and that usually goes first. And so, fantastic, you no longer have a fatty liver. Are you, are you really concerned that your butt's still big? I mean, it, it's going to come off, but I think I don't know, maybe some, sometimes people lose per perspective and, and the frustration comes out and yeah. So I think a lot of people really need to stay off the scale. And then if you start weight training, you've got a couple of things that are going on. One, you're putting on muscle. Two, your appetite's increasing. Because when you work out, your body tries to replace that energy lost. So, solid food makes the scale go up too. And if you're eating more, you're going to weigh more. Until you use it all up or eliminate the rest, whatever is going on. But, yeah, I mean, there are so many reasons why the scale would be going up. But if you just... Trust the process. Trust that whatever needs to heal first 
will heal and then you'll lose, you, you'll start dropping the excess body fat. The body is very smart. We are not that smart, especially when it comes to what our body needs. We can't even decode what our body wants anymore because there's so much noise that we out of tune with ourselves. We're out of tune with nature. Um, and I think we need to get back to that. We need to get back to listening to ourselves and I'll just go outside for five minutes and listen to the birds. I mean, yeah, you can't understand them, but in a way you can. But yeah, we need to learn how to listen to ourselves again and I don't know, maybe just sit quietly and meditate. I know nobody wants to hear that, but I think it's needed. Five minutes. Five minutes. Just try it for five minutes. Nobody has to sit there and meditate for an hour. That reminds me of a, ain't nobody got time for that. I love that woman. That was funny. I miss Tosh. Anybody else miss Tosh? God, I miss that show. Um, so yeah, you're, you're working out in the gym, you're building muscle, you're eating more, that's going to make the scale go up or slow down or numbers might not move at all. But you would like to think for all your efforts that, you know, the numbers go up, but you know. So yeah, I think we need to learn to trust the process, stay off the scale, trust that your body is healing what needs to be done that's most important. Because the body will always prioritize healing the organs and staying in a healthy state or getting to a healthy state over dropping off excess pounds. So keep that in mind too. It's just, it might not seem like anything is going on but a lot is going on. I mean, if something was wrong with my lungs or any of my other organs, I would hope that my body would prioritize fixing that before, you know, some cosmetic pounds drop off. I, I would be more grateful for that. So stay off the scale, trust the process, know that our bodies are smart and healing things that are that need to be healed before getting into cosmetic repairs. And if you're somebody who who's fixated on that number, stop. Stop that. You need a why. Your why is what is important. Your goal should not be I want to lose 30 pounds or I want to weigh 125 pounds. That should not be your goal. What is your real why? Maybe it's, I don't want chronic pain anymore. I don't want to get a full night's rest and take a two hour nap. Who wants that? Who wants to be fatigued all the time? You don't want type 2 diabetes anymore. I mean, that's a really good why. Because what does type 2, type 2 diabetes cause? It can cause blindness. It can cause limb loss. So imagine, imagine for just a second what it would be like to live your life blind. Does that extra 20, 30, 40 pounds seem so horrible? when it comes to, I don't know, never seeing a sunset again, never seeing your grandkids, what they look like when they grow up. What's more important? I don't think it's the number on the scale, at least it's not for me. But you need a stronger why on why you're doing this. And if you think 
And if you dig down really deep, I don't think it's because you want to look good in a swimsuit. Yeah, sure. We all want to look good. We want to we want to look good and we want to feel good and we want to be confident and that's great. But what good is that if you feel like dog shit? I mean, I don't know. That's just me. I think most people should stay off the scale. My why was really strong. My why was I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. Be that. Find something, find a, a reason grander than I want to be a size six. You can have that as a goal, but maybe more like a sub goal, not the essence of why you're trying to change your lifestyle. Because I mean, at some point, the carb cravings, the sugar cravings, those are going to trump that little weight goal. So you need something big. You need something that is like, you know, you're, you absolutely will not accept anything else. That's what you need. A big why. And then you need to write it down on, on several post-its and post it everywhere. And so that way, if you, you have issues, you have cravings or whatever, you can drown it with some bacon. I had a cup of bacon earlier. It was delightful. Love bacon. <laughs> so yes, yeah, stay off the scale. Take measurements. Take your before measurements. I actually did not do this. I did not do this. I went by my pants and Every month I would drop another pant size. And that was big for me. It's felt like, oh my gosh, because when when you start at 24 and then like right now I'm I'm a six, that's big. And those they just kept dropping. And right now I'm wearing these leggings. I got them from Torrid. I shopped there for many years. These leggings are size zero zero. They're my most favorite leggings in the whole wide world. They're my polka dotted leggings. I love them. They're getting baggy. So I know that even though I don't get on the scale, the process is working. It's a little bittersweet though because I mean they're polka dots and I haven't found cute polka dot pants you know say what you will about Torrid I always shopped when the big sales were going on and they have they have some cute stuff and I'm gonna miss these leggings <sighs> maybe I'll keep them and wear them as like baggy house pants or something I don't know <laughs> but yeah I'm a little sad to grow out of my favorite leggings, but I'm also happy. But that isn't the root of my happiness or why I'm doing this. It was, it was the chronic pain. And I had some bread a couple months ago. Um, not a lot of bread, but I ordered the meatball sub from, what is it called? Firehouse subs? Not Subway, no, gross. But I think it's called Firehouse Subs. That's a good meatball. And I started off eating the meatballs just out of the bread and a little part of me, out of morbid curiosity, wanted to know what would happen if I had some bread. So a couple of bites I did take with bread. It was not a good outcome. Let's just say that the next day I was, I felt hung over. It's the weirdest thing because I'm not a big drinker. In fact, the last time I got drunk, I think I was in my 20s. But the day after having just a few bites of that bread, I felt hung over, kind of not my usual peppy self. I still had energy for the whole day, but 
I don't know, I didn't feel right. Um, it didn't mess up my stomach or anything, but I know that if I would have, if I would have had more bread, it would have messed up my stomach and my, my whole digestion would be out of whack, but it was only a couple of bites. And um, yeah, I'm not interested in doing that again anytime soon. Um, but yeah, my, my why is huge as far as not wanting to be in pain, always wanting to have energy. Um, and that's the kind of why that you need. Um, this should never ever be about the scale or fitting into a smaller size. It should be that you want to live a long life and you want to keep your eyesight and you don't want to lose your limbs and I lost my gallbladder so I can't really strive for that but you could strive for keeping your gallbladder. <laughs> if I would have known then what I know now I'd probably still have my gallbladder. I probably would have searched the internet far and wide on how to keep it but it was an acute situation there was a really big stone blocking the duct there was nothing that could be done I couldn't like go home and say okay I promise I promise I'll eat good from now on no it had to come out and you can save it even if there's a lot of sludge in your gallbladder or it's acting up and you're having attacks it's not too late you can save it it's only too late when there's a blockage, like a stone gets stuck in the bile duct, then it's too late. But it's from inflammation, excessive carbs, you gotta stop that. Um, go, go ketivore, carnivore, like if you're having gallbladder attacks, I would go carnivore and get it to a state of health as quickly as possible. And then, yeah, you should be good. But stay away from those carbs. If you're having gallbladder issues now, I suggest you get a digestive enzyme. Because a lot of doctors will say, too much fat. It's not too much fat. It's the carbs. It's the carbs and the inflammation. Get some digestive enzymes. And then take one before you eat. Because your gallbladder is sluggish and it needs help. It's not working at 100%. So by taking the enzymes with the ox bile, I take super enzymes by now. You can get them on Amazon, by the way. I was on them for eight years after I uh, lost my gallbladder. Take that with every meal, get on carnivore, start healing the gallbladder. I mean, it's just a small little organ, but I, I live fine without it. Now that I'm off of a carnivore, I had horrible issues on the plant-based diet and the sad diet, but you can save it. If you want to save it, you can save it. I guess that's it. Just some, some rambling thoughts in my head from posts that I see and it's frustrating for people. It's also frustrating for me. It's to be like, no, the number on the scale isn't moving, but you're missing the point. You're Because you can't see it, you can't feel it. Eventually you'll feel it because you'll be healed and then you'll no longer have or be suffering from X, Y, or Z. But at the moment, it feels like nothing is happening. Nothing is progressing, carnivore isn't working for you, or keto, or ketovore. Trust me, it's working. You just, you can't see it. You can't, you can't feel it, but trust the process. 